Okay, so before you do use any of the brushes in Adobe Photoshop, whether it's the paintbrush or the spot healing brush or even the clone stamp tool, you need to know how to use some basic brush settings. Before I do this, I created a 5 by 7 document, which technically it's landscape, so it is 7 by 5, but that's the name we call it is 5 by 7. So we'll go ahead and create a new blank layer, and that's going to allow me to turn on and off some of the brush settings and throw them away easily, and you can't do that if you're painting on the background. So over here, there are a bunch of different brushes. You have the spot healing brush, the healing brush underneath it. You have the paint brush, you have the clone stamp tool. And anytime you click on one of those, if you see that your cursor is a circle, and just be aware, if you have your caps lock on, it won't be a circle, it'll be a crosshair. So I like to have it as a circle just because then that shows me the actual size of the brush. But um, if you see any of that circle, then that is, is a type of brush and these settings will apply. So I'm gonna use the paint brush for this example and I have my foreground and background color. I just want to paint in black. You can paint in whatever color you want. All right, so these are the settings up here, the basic brush settings. Now, be aware that the last time that you were in Photoshop, if you messed with the brush settings, those set settings will still stay there. So you might start painting and see weird things and you don't know why it's not painting at the default values. And that's because it doesn't reset every time you open Photoshop. So you'll have to come up here. And I think right here is a pretty basic setup. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is brush size and hardness. So right now the size is one pixel. And when I do that, it's going to create a really fine line. So creating a really fine line might be exactly what you're looking for. And there you go. If you want to create a really thick line, then we can go up here and create a much thicker line. Now, the easier way to do that, I don't like to come up here and slide this every single time, is there are bracket keys on your keyboard just to the right of the P key. So when I click on the left bracket, I'll move my mouse over here. When I click on the left bracket or press that left bracket, you can see that my brush is getting smaller. And when I press it, the right bracket, it's getting a lot bigger. So if I wanted to do a massive brush, I absolutely could. Okay, so I'm going to go down to a normal size brush. And again, this is a good reason why you shouldn't have caps lock on because I could be making this bigger right now and you can't see it at all. So if you hit caps lock, all of a sudden you see, oh man, that's, that's a huge brush. So let's go back to a regular size brush and let's talk about um, the hardness or softness. So if we come up here, we can see that it's usually, um, I think, at... 100% hardness. I can't remember what the actual default setting is. And you can see you have some soft and some hard brushes here. A hard brush is going to create a very defined line and then a soft brush is going to be very forgiving and it's going to fade out around the edges like you see here. So at 100% hardness when I paint it's a really fine line. You can also see that it sort of gets these bumps because my brush is round. If I come to 0% hardness or 100% softness, you can see that it has a much more forgiving um, glide to it and it fades out. Sometimes this gets annoying though because it actually, you try to paint something and because it's faded out, it'll just like ghost outside of the edges of what you're trying to paint. So I usually keep mine around 50% because it gives a kind of cleaner edge, but it's not um, as bumpy and lumpy as this one. And I actually want to change that to 72 and see what we get. So that's not bad. Now there is a keyboard shortcut and I can't remember what it is. It has to do with the bracket keys, but I think I can't remember if like it's shift left bracket will make it softer. Let's see what we got. Yep. And shift right bracket will make it harder and it goes by like 10% increments. So now you can see it should be at a hundred percent. So if you wanted to use those keyboard shortcuts, I don't change the softness quite as much as I do the size, so I don't really use the keyboard shortcuts for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab a new layer. And now what we have up here is we have the options to change the opacity, so how much color is being um, painted, but it's sort of, it's opacity means full color. 100% opacity means it's not see-through at all. If you wanted to make it semi-see-through, you could start reducing the opacity and getting closer to transparency. So sometimes I wish it would have like the opposite transparency versus opacity, softness versus hardness. So 
Yeah. And then flow is how much is actually being um, painted out of there. So these sometimes, um, I can't even tell you why they're different. Uh, flow is just how much is being painted. So if you had 10%, well, let's just do it. So let's go ahead and just pick a color. So we'll do that color. And right now it's at 100% opacity. So when I paint, it's a full color. If I do 47%, it's semi-transparent. What that means is, let's say I had, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a different color. So let's go ahead and do a deeper color here. And I'm gonna make this 100%. And I'm gonna draw, oops. I wanted to paint in this and I'm going to draw a happy face. So let's say I'm painting the happy face and then I switch back. I'm hitting X to switch and I change the opacity here. Then when I paint over this face, you can see that it's semi-transparent wherever it crosses the teal. Okay. So if I were to change the flow of it, that's how much like ink, I guess you would say, even though it's not actually real ink, that's how much ink is being... Um, dropped on the page. So if I put this at 10% and I were to do that, it, see how it kind of looks the same, except for it's a lot more bumpy because it's, um, let's go ahead and change the, the hardness. So let's make this bigger. There we go. See how it's like, like a lot lighter. And so this can really paint some nice shadows and highlights. So it's kind of hard to explain those ones. So opacity is just the transparency or lack of transparency. And the flow is actually how much paint is going on there. So let's go ahead and bring that back up. And then you have smoothing. So smoothing is going to be where... See how it dragged behind? It's painting behind my brush because it's actually trying to smooth it out. So if I were trying to do really big detail, see how it's not doing it? But if I were back down to 10%, it's trying to keep, so as you can see, it's trying to keep well, and it's easier. Let's do this smaller. So if I were trying to do that, it's trying to be pretty, you know, pretty close to what I actually did. And if I try to do this, see how it's not? It's trying to really smooth it out, and it tries to keep it in a line. So the less you have of smoothing, the more control you have. The more you have a smoothing, the more you're letting the computer or the program choose how fast it's moving or how much actual wiggle they keep in your movement. So, okay. You can also change um, smoothing options here if you wanted to. I haven't really messed with those. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is a Wacom tablet. So I'm actually using a Wacom tablet right now. So if you have a graphics tablet or a Wacom tablet, I, I can't even imagine people painting with their mouse. it. I used to hate Wacom tablets because I couldn't figure it out and it was so stressful to look at the screen while I was drawing and then the fact that the bottom left corner of the Wacom tablet equals the bottom left corner of my actual computer screen and the fact that it's not always touching like right now I'm hovering. But once you start doing it and you actually start drawing and you actually start painting and retouching, like I can't, I can't. I will not paint. I will not do anything without a Wacom, Wacom tablet if that includes kind of brushes or painting or illustrations. So, all right. So with this Wacom tablet, if I go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, um, you have pressure sensitivity options up here. So if I hover over this one, it says always use pressure for opacity, which means how hard you press on the tablet will change the opacity. So I'll turn that on. And what that means is it's at 100% and you saw with 100% earlier that it should be full color. But if I come here and I press really soft, see how it's, it's not, not full color at all? And then if I press a little bit harder, and then if I press really hard. So this is a good way to do some paint layering if you want to do some shadows and highlights or, you know, kind of build up whatever you're illustrating is to change that opacity. And I really hate super soft brushes. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit more so we have cleaner lines. So again, really hard and you can see a little bit more um, opacity. So there we go. Um, the other thing you can do is opacity or the pressure will change size. So as you can see, I was really soft here and it worked. 
and but it was still the same thickness. Now, if I'm really soft here, see how it's really thin? And the softer I get, the thinner it gets. And then the harder I press, the thicker it gets. So it's kind of like if you're being super aggressive, it should be full color and it should be huge. And if you're being really delicate, it should be less opacity. Right now I'm pressing harder and harder. And as you can see, it is getting darker or more opaque as I do so. So there we go. So if we work through that, um, that is going to give us a lot of control with our um, brushes. I usually don't have opacity on because I'm not really layering stuff. So I like it to be full color, but I do like to be able to do lighter for um, um, detail work and then harder for, for thicker lines. Okay, so those are the basic settings for your brushes in Adobe Photoshop. Make sure to watch the next tutorial video on the advanced settings using the brush and brush settings panels. In addition, there's another video on painting a tree in Adobe Photoshop that will really help you to practice these skills in basically an assignment.